let us compare few clustering algorithms we studied. So, we studied three algorithms the k means, the single linkage, a hierarchical, and the db scan density weight. So, the advantage of k means is that it is very fast, it is robust to noise, but it works only when the mean can be defined that is numerical attributes, it does not work for nominal or ordinal attributes, so it is difficult to define a mean. Also the disadvantage is it generates spherical cluster, so if you the natural clustering is non-convex, non-spherical. By the way, uh, this is uh, a spherical cluster would look like this, a convex cluster is anything which looks like this, so this is convex and this is non-convex. So, how do you know what is convex, what is non-convex? You take two points inside a cluster, draw a line, the entire line will lie inside the cluster. Whereas, in non-convex, if you take two, two points, join them by a line, there will be some points on the line outside the cluster. Okay. The single linkage provides non-convex cluster, it is the natural clustering, it can also provide spherical cluster, but it is sensitive to noise and slow for large data. Whereas, the complete linkage is uh, also non-convex, but it is also sensitive to noise. Actually, it is much slower than the single linkage, it is even more slower than single linkage, but it produces very good quality elongated clusters if required and db scan it provides density based clusters you can get any shape but because of the k nearest neighbor density estimation it will only work when the data dimension is low less than 4 so usually spatio temporal data there it works there are many modifications to this algorithm for example one modification to the k means algorithm is the k centroid or k medoid where or the k median also, where instead of the mean being updated, you take the centroid or the median getting updated. Uh, okay. So, what people have done is that they say
plus three. Okay, so this algorithm is called the Okay, so if you remember what the does is it merges this point and creates a dendrogram okay whereas k means what it does is that it just forms a partition updating the mean okay so clara combines this to how it combines choose a high value of k and run the k means. So, so these are really non convex clusters. So, you choose say k equal to 50, even the natural cluster is only 4. So, you choose k equal to 50 get lots of small small cluster. So, run a high value of k with k means get small small circles to cover up the data. So,
at points like this, in the first step you have what I do is I will merge them by. So, in single linkage instead of single points being leaps, these small clusters will be leaps and maybe distance between them is distance between their center of this point, so the spheres merge. So, your this since number of spheres are much less than the number of points, single linkage takes less time and also you get non convex cluster. Okay. So, that is the idea. So, there are many other algorithms like that, this is just an example. So, now let us come to our next topic. Evaluating clustering algorithms, how good are they? We have so much variety, which one do we choose? Okay. So, for classification we have seen accuracy, precision, recall, what do we do here? But the important thing is clustering depends on what is good cluster depends on application, but still we need to compare them because of this, uh, this reasons, these four reasons. Okay. So, let us see, you have to uh, these are the reasons tendency can you compare with existing class levels? Using only the data, how well can you evaluate? How does two clustering compare? So, this is one so this is another okay how good that how, how does they compare there are many measures called cluster indices index external internal relative okay external means there is already some ground truth some class level how can we compare against them meaning Suppose class level is this already known given, how well if we cluster like this it matches with that, that is external. Internal without knowing class level how much can we find, may say some square error, so in k means
aqui. some of this part, these distances. Okay. So, if the clustering is dense, it will be low, uh, it will be good, it is, it, uh, error will be low, it is high, it is not good. And there is a relative performance. So, the most common squared sum error is the scatter coefficient, which we discussed. It is nothing but the ratio of so is the take any two points lying in the same cluster, this distances average of that. So, that is what we have defined. So, these two terms are the as I have told you this distance these are called cohesion and separation and scatter is ratio of cohesion to separation. So, here is an example. So, this is within sum of error between sum of error. Here is an example of how we are getting these values. Okay, so, you so, if you take one single cluster, this is the mean, this is the value. Okay. And if we take two clusters, red and green, this is the value. So, you can use it to compare. Okay. So, as I have mentioned. There is another important coefficient called the silute coefficient. Okay, the silute coefficient, which is combination of these two. So you take this. Finally, you take this and if A is less than B, silute is this, if B is less than A, silute is this. It is between 0 and 1, closer it is to 1, the better and you then calculate the average silute for a, all the clusters. Okay.
so you can calculate the silhouette of this okay how to get that all right so this can be calculated there are some external measures also which are entropy and other which are defined here this is an example for some data set entropy and purity like the decision tree we have discussed earlier you can consider that also another important related thing to outlier is the uh, into clustering is outlier detection this kind of complement of cluster this is not a cluster So, in in many applications, actually outlier detection is more important than thing. So, Okay, these are the outliers. So, So, that is what is outlier. So, with this I uh, complete my discussion on the clustering and outlier detection an important class of unsupervised algorithm. In the next lectures we will look at other type of data mining tasks. Thank you.